Well, good morning, everybody. How are you? I am here this morning. I thought I would uh, share my screen as I do a little bit of work on a page of First Man. JP Roca in the house. What's good with you, brother man? Um, so yeah, so I'm just gonna it's gonna be kind of chill. Not much talking coming out of this uh, pie hole of mine because uh, when I draw First Man or when I draw anything, actually. I'm not super chatty. I'm not a chatty Kathy. Now, when I'm inking, that's a different story. When I'm inking, I can hold up a conversation like nobody's business. But when I'm scribbling, not so much. I started working on this page yesterday, so I've got stuff done, but I, I'm going to take you through some of the process. Uh, what's up, American Comics? Hail to you. So I'm going to share my screen. Uh, I don't really think you need to see my... Uh, well, let me see if I can do it like this. Oh, that's not bad. So there we go. Yes, JP's got it. Work, work, work. So this program is uh, Sketchbook Pro. Uh, when I do do penciling, Prater 7, good morning. When I do do penciling digitally, this is the program I use. Uh, after I read my uh, script right here, you can see the script right here in the lower corner. After I read this, I, I figure out my panel border shapes and stuff and uh, kind of start going. So I have a, just to zoom out real quick, I have a page here. This is my template that I use for drawing. You can see I can do book title, issue number, all that. I, I set this one up. This isn't based on like Marvel or DC. It's just pretty generic. And then, uh, so that's one layer. And then the next layer I do is the panel borders. So boom, I did the panel borders. Devil flyer in the house. Hello. Uh, so I did the panel borders. And then uh, I read the script. And the first panel is going to start off with a long shot of Luke's house. So we've got that down there. Uh, I got that popped in. It's this long shot. It's going to be nighttime. So that's Luke's house. Uh, you can kind of see he's basically talking to his dad. Luke's going to be right here on a hammock. His dad's going to be right here leaning against the wall. But if you saw before uh, on the professionals last week, you'll see that I use a program called SketchUp, which is a 3D drawing program. And uh, let me show you guys. I actually have... Luke's house built out in SketchUp so I can move the camera around it. So I can show you guys um, 
what I did in that, I'm opening that program now. So just give me a second here as it opens and I'll show you guys. Let's see. That's right. Just drawing first man in the morning. First, that's why I got my old man specs on so I can see as I draw. Do, 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 do. Give me a sec as this program opens. Here it is. So this is the, the program SketchUp. This is Luke's house that I did. This is Luke's house right here. It's a modest little house. You know, it's just him, his mom, his dad. They don't need a big house, couple cars, a shed in the background. This is Luke's bedroom right here. If you've got volume one, you'll notice I you see inside the bedroom, he flies in through this window. You, know, you got the hammock and the grill on the porch, you know, stuff like that. I also designed the inside of Luke's house. So this is the inside of the house right here. So the front of the house, you go in, there's a seat, there's a living room with the TV and stuff. You go down a hallway hallway here to a guest bedroom, the guest bathroom, the laundry room. Come over here. You've got the dining room, the small kitchen. This I haven't done anything with yet, but this would be the master bedroom and the master bathroom. Uh, I haven't done anything because I don't ever know if we'll see inside his parents' bedroom and bathroom. So until there comes a point where I know I have to draw it, I'm not going to spend the time making it up. Uh, and then right back here, this is Luke's bedroom right back here. So, uh, this is Luke's bedroom. That's the window he came in. So anyhow, in this scene, this scene I'm drawing today takes place on this back patio. Prater says, Dan, very nice 3D work. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, full disclosure, I didn't make the cars. There's a thing called 3D Warehouse. I downloaded a couple cars. I wanted Luke to drive a Mustang like I used to drive. I mean, you got to realize this Mustang is now, you go, wow, Luke drives a Mustang. That's pretty chill for a college student. This Mustang is 30 years old. It's a beater. Um, I did download this house, but then I added on the fence, the shed, the grill. I added on this back part of the house for Luke's bedroom. Of course, there's the one house across the street. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Well, tell your dad. Thank you very much. Um, so anyhow, what I did was... I figured out the angles I wanted for the page that I'm drawing, move the camera around, and then you can export anything as a 2D JPEG. So back to here, this is the background for panel two. I have the layer uh, pretty low because I'm going to be uh, drawing over top of it, but that's the background for panel two. Once I'm ready to, uh, to print this page out in blue, I'll print it out. I'll take out all the stuff outside the borders. And then as you'll see when I do the rough, uh, I'll add in, you know, details and stuff. Oh, to be honest, Mustangs are beaters. Not cool, JP. Uh, this is the background scene for panel three. We zoom in a little closer. Luke's going to be lying in the foreground here on the old... Uh, the old uh, uh, hammock, his dad will be in the background. This is the background for panel four. We're going to be looking down on the scene. 
And then uh, panel seven, we're going to end the scene with a nice long shot with uh, looking on the neighborhood and a moon in the sky and stuff. So anyhow, from here, I uh, let's turn these on. This gets confusing. But from here, the first thing I did was my initial rough right here, uh, roughing in. The people and and stuff like that so yes there's a bot in the house let's get rid of that bot dump the bot so yes yeah, so you can see luke laying here his dad dad luke here here uh this panel right here is going to be a tight close-up of uh, luke's dad which i did on a separate layer so i can move it around and stuff uh, so let's get to where I'm at now. Val, thank you. Hello. Don't be the last man to back this book. Be the first man. You know it. Val knows it. That's a, that's a great tagline. Don't be the last man. Be the first man. That's right. We are so close to $40,000 unlocking the next stretch goal. Let's do it. With your help, we can. All right. So. Let me get back to this. I got to lower the opacity on this rough so I can actually draw over top of it. And uh, here's the tighter stuff that I'm doing. And then after I get the whole page to this level of tightness that you can see here, turn off the rough. After I get the page to this level of tightness, that's when I'll print it out in blue and uh, start adding details to these guys, clothing, all that stuff. And then, uh, then I can ink it. So first thing I gotta do, I realize is, ooh, oh, uh, I don't want to forget this. So Always save because I've had that unfortunate thing where this program will crash and I lose my work, which sucks. So anyhow, I'm going to start drawing. Uh, I wish I could play music in the background, but unfortunately I can't because then I'd get a copyright strike. Not a copyright strike, but demonetized, whatever it is. And I don't want that to happen. So uh, I'll look up every now and then for comments, but uh, I'm just going to do a little... Uh, little Tightening up of this stuff. Make sure that's good. His dad's drinking a cup of coffee. You always want to have something going on, some action in these static panels where people are just talking.
I missed what you said at the beginning. You use Sketchbook for thumbnails and then or what, if that makes sense. Uh, this is Sketchbook Pro, the drawing program. Uh, I just use this for basic drawing. Uh, sometimes I work straight to the page. It just depends on what's on the page. Hey, you're welcome. Hope I answered the question. What's up, Skip Edwards? Good morning. Oh, Val, thank you for that uh, that info about the copyright-free stuff and, and whatnot. Here, hold on. Let me see what I can find. Oh, copyright-free background music. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see how this is. You guys hear that? Is that coming through? Let me know if you can hear that. Damn, JP Roca throwing down the shade on the Mustangs. Painful. Painful. So give me a thumbs up if you guys can hear that. Thank you. Yes. All right. Well, we'll just keep this going then. Now there's a little bit of, little bit of nice uh, chill music as I uh, as I draw.
slightly erotic atmosphere. Well, you know, that's why I go for it. I like old Buicks. I used to have a Buick Regal. Oh, 1986 Buick Grand National. Those cars were badass. That V6.
see at this stage i'm really only concerned with the nice basic shapes of these figures um i want to make sure the construction of the figures and the proportion is is accurate because then when i print this out i can pencil over the clothing and the details of the faces and stuff pretty simply and then ink it remember all good drawing is built on really solid foundation basic shapes etc It's like watching Bob Ross paint, except it's watching Andy Smith draw.
be driving around in my Buick Grand National blasting this. You could, and you'd get some weird looks. Let's see. 
How did you come up with the name First Man? That looks great. Thank you so much. How did I come up with the name First Man? It's a great question because I'm trying to remember. Uh, how did I come up with the name First Man? I don't, you know, I'll be honest, I don't remember. It's been so long, I really don't remember how I came up with First Man. I, I know that's not the answer you wanted, but it's been so long. Here's one thing I like about drawing digital. I had the concept before I had the name. I do know that. This is one thing I like about digital. Oh, he's supposed to be touching his shoulder. Oh, okay, now he is. And I think he's a little too big. So I'm able to reduce his size, move him up, and all that. Vain, hello. Thank you. 
Hooters, Hooters, yum, yum, yum. Hello. This is one of those things where I can draw it or I might just play around and go, let's see if I can get the background to work for what I just sketched out. Probably not, but it'll at least give me a reference to work from. Yes, I uh, I made uh, this is Luke's house for those just joining. This is Luke's house, and this is the interior of the house for that I made. See, Luke's house is very modest. Little living room, dining room. This is the master bedroom, bathroom, which we'll never probably see, so I don't have to do it. Luke's bedroom. So this is his house. Even though we'll probably never see the washroom and all this other stuff, I probably should design that. Eh, maybe sometime. Uh, it's a program called SketchUp. It's a 3D modeling program.
nope, that's not going to work for me, so I'll use it as a reference. Here I'm just laying down a perspective grid using the perspective tools. Subtle three-point perspective, just pull these out. Thank you. 
Now I'll show you how I uh, get this ready. What program is this? Doesn't look like the Photoshop I use. Slick Rick, what is up? This is Sketchbook Pro. Uh, I like using this when I do stuff digital. Zero in the house. Hello. Oops, I forgot. I gotta tighten up this. Thank you. 
Look at these two people. Here's some bullet nailed it andy with the customer service on hold music in the background you know it's true because when i'm drawing i've got to use all my limited brain power to get this right and uh instead of having you guys sit in silence uh my buddy val had a great idea which is copyright free music on youtube Never tried Sketchbook before. Started using Clip Studio Paint recently for perspective tools, though. Like it so much, I'll probably stop using Photoshop altogether. I just like this better than Clip Studio as well, to be honest. But everybody, you know, has their own thing. I like Clip Studio for inking. But for drawing, I like this program better.
All right, now I can take this into Photoshop to finish up what I need to do so I can print it out. All right. Ronald Shaw in the house. Sketchbook has some great digital pencils. Yes, it does. That's one reason I love it. I think Sketchbook feels more like a real pencil than Photoshop or Clip Studio. Here I'm adjusting the backgrounds.
Uh, Slick Rick says the idea of having to keep paying a subscription for Photoshop CC is annoying as well. Yeah, I, uh, I'm still using CS5. This is the version of Photoshop before it went to the uh, subscription. So now that I have it at this stage, I've got to get it set to print out in blue. So I can tighten up the pencils, add details, things like that. Oh, actually, there's one other thing I want to do. Looking for some reference.
do 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 So, Have to change it to grayscale. Duotone. I already have my blue set up for Duotone for when I print things out. This is a little too light. So image adjust levels. I like that to print so I can see it. And then I just have to uh, put some paper in the printer. So excuse me while I put some paper into the printer. Got my 11 by 17 Strathmore Bristol right here. I used to, I've used Corel Painter. I like it, but I haven't used it in a long time. Uh, looks like I gotta order some more paper. I'm going to order more paper. Running low. Let me put this in the printer. That's right, excuse me while I print this out. Print dialog box, make it 50 11 by 17. Check the old print settings. Now I'll print it out. Then after it's printed out, I'll take it to my desk and start doing some full pencils on it. Details and clothing. Got to figure out what dad and son are wearing. Add some details to those backgrounds. Details to the windows and things like that. That's right. Everybody watching, please remember to hit the like and subscribe button. If you haven't backed First Man, please go back it now. You're seeing it come to life. Um, is my printer as nice as... I don't know what type he has, but I have an Epson Workforce 7510. Uh, obviously, it's oversized to print 11 by 17. Oh, he does too. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a standard. They don't make the 7510 anymore, the one I have, but, you know, Epson makes a workforce. So I'm going to turn this music down just a little bit. Should 
should be background music for when I talk, not so you can hear uh, hear me blather on about everything music. It's printing. I don't know if you can hear the printer, but it's doing it. Hmm. All right, it's done printing. Let me go get it and show you guys. Here it is. So now I just have to go over to my actual drawing table and uh, finish it off. So there it is. So uh, guys, uh, I'm just looking at it, everything looks good. Put that right there. Thank you for joining me as uh, I got that page ready to uh, to go to my drawing table. I appreciate the company. Yeah, I know it was hard to see, but I mean, basically it's, oops, hold on. It was hard to see, but it's this. I mean, this is what it is. So it's just now on paper from my, it's magic. It went from my screen to paper. It's magic, baby. It's magic. So there you go. So now I got to finish it up. Guys, thank you so much for joining me, Past Master Dan. No, thank you guys. Really, thank you for all your support. Thank you for helping me grow the channel. Thank you for backing my book. Please spread the word about it. And, uh, and there it is. It's a good time as always. Back First Man Volume 2 Learning Curve. Thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate it so much. And uh, I'm going to leave you with this. Luke Henry, after kicking Monarch's ass to the depths of space, is back on Earth. And now he's looking to save the world from the Fourth World Foundation. Sure, he had help from Penumbra before, but she's not helping him this time. He's got to face it on his own. Look at these four people. He's coming for a villain known as Adonis. He'll do it. You'll be there. Back it now. First Man 2, learning curve.